An unassuming monk, a hermit of the mountain, and a rogue warrior. Saito Mushashubo Benkei is commonly the subject of Japanese folklore, given some of the astonishing tales spun about his life. But he also served under the famous warrior, Minamoto no Yoshitsune, as his right-hand man. We understand that Benkei was born in the middle of the 12th century, and was at one point or another a part of the Sohei, the warrior monks from which most of his training and expertise in battle came from. One story tells of how his father was the head of a temple, who had raped his mother, the daughter of a blacksmith. Other accounts imply that Benkei was actually the offspring of a god, given his monstrous height, some reporting that he was almost seven feet tall. Contemporaries at the time claimed he had wild and untamed hair with deadly sharp teeth that were unusually elongated. Others at the time would refer to him as a demon or an ogre. Spending most of his time traveling between temples under the Sohei, Benkei would become very familiar with battle. He would be trained with the Naginata, as all Sohei usually were, before he joined the Yamabushi, a secret sect of monks who believed that they could achieve supernatural powers by living amongst nature. While their methods and practices are elusive, one can only wonder whether Benkei had discovered something mystical that heightened his own abilities, given the tales that were later spun about him. In addition with the Naginata, Benkei was notorious for carrying seven other weapons with him, including a sword, a broad axe, a rake, a sickle, a wooden mallet, a saw, and an iron staff, all of which he would wear on his back. Many will likely point out that carrying weapons on your back is impractical and cumbersome, and that this is particularly restrictive when being engaged in battle. And while this may be true, we all know that carrying weapons on your back looks way cooler. Benkei's story certainly has that anime feel to it, where it's understood that he wandered around the city of Kyoto every night, under his own personal quest to take 1,000 swords from samurai by defeating them in combat. If the samurai were respectful and honourable, he would not engage them, but if they were arrogant and impudent, he would challenge them. As the tales go, he would usually win, where he defeated 999 warriors and collected all of their swords. In his hunt for the final samurai, he would stumble across a strange young man playing a flute at a shrine. It's not known if this samurai came across as conceited, which warranted Benkei engaging him, but it can be safely assumed that this was not the case, as the two would actually make their way to a nearby bridge, for neither man wished to fight in front of the shrine. Benkei would notice as they made their way to the battleground that this samurai had a gilded sword slung around his waist, and not on his back because that would have been too dope. The sword certainly would have made a nice addition to Benkei's collection, and Benkei himself was feeling pretty confident given that he towered over the much smaller man. Benkei would actually lose the battle though, for the mysterious flute playing samurai turned out to be none other than the renowned warrior Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Benkei's life was spared, and the victorious Minamoto no Yoshitsune thanked Benkei for their duel and went about on his way. Benkei would not accept defeat though. He became bitter over his loss and sought revenge at all costs. So he waited for Yotsune at the temple a few days later, only to lose yet again. Realizing that he could not beat Yotsune in battle, he became the man's retainer, and would go on to become his loyalist ally during the Genpei War, when the Minamoto clan were against the Taira clan. Yotsune would see many victories against the Taira clan, and both he and Benkei would become a renowned duo and a formidable force until Yotsune's older brother betrayed him. Yoshitsune and Benkei were labelled outlaws and forced to flee in the years of 1185 to 1189. It's possible that Benkei may have actually been spared had he gone on his own way, but he stuck by Yoshitsune, even during this time, despite the threat to his own life. By the time of Yoshitsune's death, he was surrounded by his brother's men at his castle. He would make his way to the inner reaches of the castle where he intended to commit seppuku, and he would ask Benkei for one last act of service, to guard the bridge which led to him. Some accounts have it that the Minamato soldiers who came hunting for Yotsune were hesitant to cross the bridge when they saw Benkei standing there, the near seven foot monster standing ready with his weapons drawn, daring them to come closer. When they did advance, all who approached were slain by Benkei, who was said to have killed nearly 300 soldiers all by himself in this one engagement. No matter how many men tried to cross the bridge, Benkei dealt with them all. 
The soldiers were at a loss at what to do. There was this hulking demon guarding the gate to their target, this very demon now soaked in blood and showing no signs of fatigue as he stood in defiance. They realised rushing him head on in a melee would only result in more losses, and so the soldiers decided to line up their archers and fill Benkei with arrows instead. Even as the arrows found purchase on his flesh though, Benkei was said to carry on swinging his weapons. Eventually though, even Benkei began to slow, and soon he had an arrow sticking out of every inch of him. To the amazement of the soldiers, Benkei finally stopped moving, though as he died, he did so standing upright, as if to defy death itself as he clung to life, desperate to fulfil his master's last request to the fullest. It would become known as the Standing Death of Benkei.